This is News 8 This Morning. Good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for being here. It is 6 a.m. on this Wednesday. Eric Connor and Stella Escobedo with you. I don't know about you, Stella, but I've been enjoying Mother Nature's natural air conditioning, just kind of opening the windows here and keeping the home cool that way. I agree with you. I'm loving it. It's so nice. I hope you guys are enjoying it at home as well. Uh, good morning to you. Let's get right into your headlines. We are another step closer to reopening more local businesses. The county is pushing forward with plans that await the green light from our governor. News 8's Netta Aranpour joins us live to explain this major push. Good morning to you, Netta. Good morning. Yeah, a lot of restaurants uh, would be able to open up for in restaurant dining and retail shops. You can go shopping inside if the governor gives that approval. All of this could happen as early as today with other local businesses possibly opening up on Friday if the county's proposed plan gets approved by the governor. So right now it's a waiting game to see what the governor decides. Now, Dr. Wilma Wooten uh, believes that San Diego County may have potentially peaked when it comes to COVID-19 cases on on April 20th. Now she also pointed out other factors that would show San Diego is ready to reopen many businesses. That includes a positive COVID-19 test rate of under 4%, a two-week supply of personal protective equipment, and a testing capacity that exceeds the state's requirements. So the County Board of Supervisors unanimously agreed to accelerate phase two, and that would again allow for the reopening of in-store retail and dine-in restaurants, along with swap meets, provided these businesses make certain safety modifications of course, allowing for social distancing and increasing sanitation. If the governor approved that plan, the reopenings could start today. The board also took it a step further, voting four to one to ask the governor's permission for a pilot program to enter into phase three, and that would be as early as Friday, and that would include hair and nail salons, fitness centers and condo or apartment complex swimming pools, all capped at 25% capacity, modified youth sports and outdoor religious services, support groups of less than 10 people, and reopening research labs. Take a listen now to what county supervisors had to say. We have a plan before us that is a very responsible plan. It's based on facts. It's based on science. You know, when lives are ruined from financial devastation and staying at home it has its own behavioral health issues. I certainly understand the tremendous economic impact uh, that this is having and I understand the tremendous pressure uh, that people are feeling. Um, but I think that the uh, lessons of history and lessons of the present with a number of uh, countries guide us uh, to a belief that doing this in a, a thoughtful and methodical way is so that was Supervisor Nathan Fletcher, who you just heard from. He was the one person voting against uh, going for that phase three. Now, he did say, let's do phase two first, see how that goes before we enter into the next phase. Now, Governor Gavin Newsom has said on a statewide level, we could all be ready for phase three as early as June. But again, the County Board of Supervisors voting four to one to start that phase three on Friday for that pilot program. So that proposal has been sent to the governor. And at this point, everyone's waiting to find out what the governor has to say. The county's chief executive officer saying they want to abide by the state rules. We are live in front of the county offices. We'll send it back to you. Netta, thank you. Today, the Sequan Casino will reopen to the public. It is the second local casino to open their doors since the coronavirus pandemic. Doors open at noon. You will be screened before you go inside. Face coverings are required and make sure to maintain social distancing. Reopening, of course, depends heavily on the numbers in the county. The number of confirmed coronavirus cases now tops 6,000. Health officials announced 80 new cases of COVID-19 out of the 2,600 tests performed, so that's a positive rate of 3%. The 14-day rolling average is down to 3.9%. The county reported 11 new deaths, sadly bringing the total to 222, with nearly half of those from nursing homes or assisted living facilities. And the good news here, there have been 3,938 recoveries, so it's good to see that number going up. And let's take a closer look at the numbers worldwide and here in the U.S. Worldwide, 4.9 million cases right now. The U.S. has 1.5 million of those. More than 92,000 Americans have died. A positive note here, more than 297,000 people have recovered. Hospitals near the U.S.-Mexico border are dealing with a surge in coronavirus cases. Imperial County's only two hospitals were forced to stop admitting new COVID patients after hitting maximum capacity. The spike seems to be among U.S. citizens who live in Mexicali. The emergency rooms of both hospitals have imposed a divert order requiring any additional COVID-19 cases be redirected to other medical facilities in the region. 
And time now for the morning rush today. 49th District Representative Mike Levin is inviting constituents to a virtual town hall to address questions regarding the latest public health information, the federal response to the pandemic, and much more. Representative Levin will be joined by Dr. Cheryl Anderson and Dr. Jamal Kothani. Constituents can send questions ahead of time by emailing them to the email you see below. Uh, you can find that information as well on our website. Include your first name as well as where you live. It starts today at 2 and you can join in from Facebook, Twitter, as well as YouTube. Mayor Kevin Faulkner announced the city of San Diego will use federal and state COVID-19 relief funds to offset major budget cuts proposed last month to manage pandemic-related revenue shortfalls. The mayor says the city faces a budget deficit of over 350 50 million dollars. City officials have cited a lack of tourism and sales tax revenues. However, 270 million dollars in federal and state funding will help prevent some cuts Mayor Faulkner proposed last month. The North Park Planning Committee approved the Main Street Association's conceptual plan to close 30th Street and allow restaurants to move chairs and tables outside to expand their dining. The California Restaurant Association estimates 30% of restaurants will close for good in the next 16 to 18 months. A date hasn't been set, but a pilot program would be in place for two weeks from Thursday to Saturday, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., and help give restaurants a boost. This is a lifeline that we're throwing our businesses to allow them to use the public right-of-way to increase their capacity. A city spokesperson says it is investigating an emergency ordinance that would allow businesses to use public and private space for open air operations. While restaurant owners may be ready to reopen, many customers are saying not so fast. Yeah, a new survey found that most people are not ready to rush back to their favorite dining tables. Just 47% of respondents said they are likely to visit their favorite restaurants as soon as possible. 50% of people said they had been visiting restaurants for drive through or pickup, and most people were ordering pizza, hamburgers, and Mexican food. A lot of restaurants uh, ready to roll here. And if we want to know, would you, will you dine in once those restaurants are back open up? Yeah, you can vote now on our News 8 app or cbs8.com slash vote. We want to hear from you. How comfortable are you at dining in? And we're going to check in on our results in the next half hour. We really want to know what you think. As you're getting up with us, we, you know, we're hearing this recent study, but it, it's close, 50-50 if you think about it. Right now, 70% of you saying you're not ready. Mm -hmm. uh, the 10% that says still thinking about it, you understand that because it might be coming down to you know, what protections are in place. You show up there and see uh, if there's partitions, if everyone's wearing masks, you know, if they're following the rules. So it'll be interesting to see. So keep weighing in on that to vote. So to come here after being sidelined for weeks because of an outbreak on board, the USS Theodore Roosevelt is heading back out to sea. And two dams overflowing in Michigan. The latest as thousands are forced to evacuate from their homes because of this severe flooding. Wow, details on this next. Even though there is no reopening date in sight for hair salons, we're speaking to one local salon about what they're doing to prepare and to keep customers safe when the time is right.